YouTube viewers. It's Kim. How are you? <laughs> I hope you guys are doing well. I um, just did a video on all stuff, government stuff, and uh, I had a few questions that were not government related <laughs> or not like, you know, politics related. So I thought I would put the, these in a separate video. Um, I just had a few questions that I thought were kind of interesting, and I thought I would just kind of give you what I have learned through readings, through stuff I've read, through my own experiences, and and you guys can, you know, you can see how these things resonate with you. You know, maybe you'll you'll disagree, and it's okay. You know, that's 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 for all. You know, we nobody knows everything, so <laughs> I'll just give you what I what I you know think that I've I've kind of um, learned, and I will just kind of share that with you. Um, so one question is, um, how, as a parent, how do we not step in and fix everything all the time? And, you know, of course, I'm going to take kind of a spiritual perspective. Uh, as a parent, I, I have to say that when, um, you know, Cassie was home and in school, and it was really hard for me. That was actually a thing I used to do all the time. And um, at one point, I realized that she just wanted me to listen. That's really what she needed me to do was just listen, just stop talking and listen. And then after dealing with um, learning about uh, being present and um, really getting into the teachings of Eckhart Tolle, I took that a step further and um, I realized that my job was to be present as a parent, to just to be there and be there fully, um, completely engaged and aware, not up in my head thinking of what am I going to do? What's the solution? What can I find? Just listening and being completely present. So those two things um, help a lot um, because you, you're not meant to fix everything. Um, the other thing I would say is that in many, many readings I've done for parents that are having this issue, the answer has come through several times that we are all here for our different spiritual experiences and our different spiritual lessons. And um, when we're a parent, we feel um, so responsible for our children and which we are, we are responsible to keep them safe and to keep them healthy and, and all of these things. But um, in these readings, the people that I'm speaking to, their guides would come through and say, um, but please try to remember that we're all here as individuals for our own individual experiences. And that sometimes even difficult experiences. And so keep that in mind that, that this may be an experience that they wanted to have and um, to be able to work through, to be able to experience. And we, we should be there for support and be there for, to, to love them and do what we can and, and um, you know, be there to help. But as far as taking over and fixing it and making everything right, that may be um, diminishing the actual spiritual experience they they wanted to have, or they 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 um, are determined to have, because you know you, you we all do this thing where we repeat things again and again to try to get the lesson right, or to try to understand it, or to try to make sure that we are having the experience we wanted to have, and we'll end up kind of getting on this broken record kind of thing. So, if you do interfere, it may be that that's the cycle we'll go into is this repetitive thing where they keep doing the same thing over and over again. And as soon as you kind of step back and let it play out, then all of a sudden it's resolved. They figure it out. They, you know, the right people step in or the right circumstance happens. So I think thinking of those, those things are helpful. They're helpful to me and I'm just sharing them. Um, and you can also you know, share with each other in the comments, because I think this is one of those things where you may have thought one way before you had kids and after you have kids, it's a completely different um, situation that we all learn as we, as we go when we're parents. So that's, that's what I wanted to, to share with you. So, so you can't fix everything. And um, if you 
are finding yourself, okay, I keep trying to fix it and I can't, just listen and add into that being present, being completely, completely present with your child listening to them and just let it just, just be there for them. Um, start there and then um, think about it as kind of a bigger spiritual picture, okay? Um, and then another question about children was how to raise them to be awake and enlightened. Um, I don't know all the ways, <laughs> and, but what I can tell you is one way that I found that was really, really helpful is to get your child to be able to recognize and be aware of their own thoughts. Because as Eckhart Tolle says, once you can do that, a new consciousness enters. You're able to see things a little bit differently, understand yourself in a different way. You're able to recognize what is clearly just repetitive thought, um, what he would call identifying with form and really, and you know, uh, Gary Zukoff, a spiritual teacher calls that the seat of the soul. When you can look, when you're, when you're sitting and observing your own thoughts and, and your own actions and reactions, when you're able to do that, you're sitting in the seat of your soul. That's where you are. You're, 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 you're in that, you're in that seat. You're, you're, you are your soul at that point because you're that quiet, um, that quiet observing consciousness in the background. That's what Eckhart Tolle calls it. And so once you're in that vantage point, you're actually, you are your soul. That's where you are um, when you can observe. So if you can try to get your children to recognize their own thoughts and that it, that the, that stream of consciousness, that stream of thinking isn't them. It's just their brain going over things again and again. So if they had a bad experience or they did something wrong or they uh, were are able to forgive someone at all encompasses in that, that one act of being able to just recognize that it's just thinking this act that happened, you know, three years ago, or this thing you did, Two weeks ago, it's not happening right now. It's just in your mind. It's over. It's done. Um, it's a powerful thing. But if you can start teaching your kids how to do that, it's a very powerful tool to have. Um, and it's, it's a powerful tool to have as an adult to be able to realize it's just my thoughts. I'm not still in this marriage. I'm not still, you know, why am I still thinking about this job where I was so angry? It's done. It's over. They have moved on. I'm, you know, I'm just going over it and over it, making myself upset. And I think that goes with all this stuff with, with Trump and everything else. Notice how much you go over the things that have happened in the last four years. And it's, it's not happening. We, we have to get in a different consciousness and move and move forward, not forget, not, not hold people accountable, but that that's part of moving forward. Right. So anyway, that's what I got. That's what I got. Um, the last question was about religion. And this is one that I, it took me time to work through. Um, for those of you who don't know, I was raised in the Mormon church. Um, I don't have any hard feelings about the Mormon church. I think that there are so many, it has a lot of wonderful qualities. It just, it didn't really um, serve me in the way that it had when I was younger. I had, I had kind of, um, they had, kind of supported things that I wasn't supportive of. And I just felt like it wasn't my place anymore. And I kind of moved on to um, look for something that did resonate with me. And that's when I started to do a lot of reading and a lot of searching. And um, I get emails from people who are still very torn between, they like this channel and they, they, um, listen to what I'm saying and they, they, it resonates with them, but they still kind of um, fall back, back into, but you know, in the Bible, it says this, and in the Bible, it says that. And what I would say is that we, we are constantly evolving as people, as souls, as a planet, and even in the Bible, there's an Old Testament and a New Testament ideas and um, the stories, the parables, the ideas, the um, 
the um, conclusions evolved from one book to the other book. Um, and we're still constantly evolving. It doesn't mean that you can't take everything that you've learned in those things and take them with you. It doesn't mean that. It just means that we're we're learning more and we're going forward in a different in a different way um, as we as we learn, as we grow, as we you know, spiritually develop. So I would say you have to do what's you know personally right for you. Um, but I would also say that you know so many of these things have to do with intention. If you use cards, if you use a pendulum, if you use any kind of tool, um, if you incorporate prayer with meditation or yoga with prayer, it, it's your intention. What is your intention? Your intention is to have, usually your intention is to have a happier, more peaceful life. And as long as that's your intention, that's that's it. You know, that's that's everything right there. If your intention is to bring in evil spirits or to bring in, you know, negativity, then that that's probably what's going to happen. But if you're a person who grew up with the Bible and you um, and a lot of it is language as well. Um, when I was in the church, I would pray uh, as a kid. I, I was I was always very connected to the other side in some way. I was always very connected to, to, to God, to, to Christ. I was very connected to um, those ideas of there being something more. I've always been like that. What has changed for me is the language I use and how I access that um, connection. When I was younger, it was always through prayer. I would always pray. And what I realized was, um, as I got to be a little older is that I would pray about something during the week and I'd go to church on Sunday and somebody would say something or I would hear a phrase or I would, we would sing a song or we would, there'd be a lesson that would answer my question. I started to put that together when I was like probably about 13 or 14 years old and it never failed me. Um, every once in a while, you know, there wouldn't be anything, but, but usually what I prayed for it and I would just wait till Sunday. Cause I think, well, my, my question's going to be answered on Sunday. I know that because it's always answered on Sunday. And so right there, I'm doing exactly what I do now, but I, I was using different language. I was using a different platform. I was praying to, to God. I would, you know, pray to God. And then, um, I would wait for the answer to come. And I just knew it was almost like manifesting because I just knew it was going to come on Sunday. I had that faith, that um, that um, recognition of that somebody's hearing me and they're they're responding to me. So, and now, how it's different is that I I still pray, um, but I don't. I might I might pray to um, I would say pray to, but I I pray in I speak to um, my guides. I speak to God. I speak to, um, you know, what I would call God, but you, people might call it source energy or the universe. Um, it's just language. It's that's the only thing that's really different. Um, and then I don't really go to a church. My church is here. My church is wherever because I know I'm always connected. It doesn't. I doesn't. I don't have to go to church to get my answer anymore. I can get it right here. I can be sitting right here and get an answer. Um, and, and part of it is just that faith that I'm going to get it. That's why I'm, I was talking about the fact that that's that kind of missing ingredient that sometimes people don't, don't have that faith and that trust. And it's, that's a, so much of this. So if you can get that, you know, that faith and that trust and just, just know it's coming, that's so much of what, um, what is happening and then accept it when it comes. And, um, it can be just like that. It can be in a feeling, it can be in a word, in a song, in a somebody that you he, overhear walking down the street. It could be something you see on TV. It can be so many ways that your 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 questions or your your concerns or your problems can be answered. It's up to us to be alert 
And it was funny because I was thinking about this, you know, that I had put this together. I completely forgot about that, that I had, I, that's how I would always get my, my problems answered was, was that's what I would do. But it's funny because on, during the week, I'd be like, huh, not being alert to anything where they, I was probably getting answered then too, but I knew on Sunday to be hyper alert and listen for that answer. And that was the difference. So I was probably getting answers, <laughs> answers left and right, but, but I was, I was so focused on, well, Sunday is when I'm alert. Sunday is when I'm awake. Um, so that was when I was getting all, all of the answers and all of the things I was looking for. But now I know as soon as I ask that question or ask for that information, I'm awake, I'm alert, I'm waiting for it because I know someone's hearing me and is going to answer, right? So what I would say to those people who are afraid or, or scared, you know, there isn't anything to be afraid of unless you are, you have ill intent. And I don't think anyone watching this channel has ill intent. I feel like if you're trying to be a good person and you're just trying to get along, use the tools and the things that resonate with you. If you, if you love the words of the Bible, read the Bible. If you love speaking to God, speak to God. But if you also kind of think the tarot cards are interesting, find a deck that speaks to you. If you, you know, it, it's, it's, it's really just language and tools that change, but it's the same. It's all the same thing. You're just trying to connect and have communication being talked to. And it's, it's all the same. So, you know, whether you're praying or meditating or using cards, or it's all forms of communication, trying to reach out and it's, and then that listening, you know, whether it's, you know, going back into meditation or going to church on Sunday or, or, you know, singing church hymns or what, whatever, you're still trying to get that response, that answer, um, or it's just being quiet, or if it's getting a, a, a vision or, an, you know, um, some clear audience or a feeling, something in chakras or using crystals, it's all the same. You're trying to get the answer. And we all have different things and ways that resonate with us. So what I would say you know, it, it has to be a personal decision, but if you are feeling kind of pulled to other things, don't see it as, you know, the devil's pulling you away or something, or, or there's something wrong with it. No, it's just your, your, something is, something else is calling out to you the way that your church did, or the way that the Bible did. Um, Be open to those things. You can always say, okay, well, I don't think this works for me, but I would say, just don't cut things off. Um, try them, see how they work with you. Um, and know that, you know, when I was younger, everything was, and it wasn't so much the church, but it was individuals, old, older relatives and stuff would say things like, you know, the, the, um, it was, you know, Satan made you do that or Satan was, you know, will make people do that or Satan will make people bad or Satan will, you know, it's like this guy was going around, you know, messing with people. And it was, it's scary to think that way as, as a kid, you know, that somebody can make you do bad stuff. It's like, no, that's not at all what it is <laughs> at all. It's, it's your own, your own will and intent. And so if your own will and intent is bad, then yeah, that you, things could go wrong or whatever, or, or get bad results. But when you're just trying to live a happier, more peaceful life and have your problems or questions answered, that's, that's what the universe, that's what God wants for you too. So it's, it's all good. So see what resonates with you. You know, I love my surrender cards. I love, um, I like to write. I like to draw. I like cer certain things, you know, kind of bring stuff out of me. I love to sing. Um, um, you know, so see what resonates with you, see what speaks to you, what gives you that peace, what makes you feel more closer to spirit. Um, it could be some kind of art. It could be, you know, the cards or the pendulum or, you know, some other so, uh, crystals, you know, it, it, it really depends on you. 
but it's all the same. It's just different tools and different language. That's it. That really is it. It's all about communication and wanting to build a relationship, wanting to communicate, call and response, right? Okay, so I hope this is, I hope it's not too long winded. I didn't mean to go on forever, but I do think these are important things that people really worry about and are concerned about. And there really doesn't need to be that worry or concern. It really is a, it's personal preference. It really, really is. And, and intent, you know, what is your intent? Um, that's it. Okay. All right, guys. So um, please subscribe the channel. Please like the channel, subscribe to the channel, like the channel, um, or, the, you know, hit the like thing. I guess that that's a thing now or something. <laughs> I, mean, I think it makes a difference to YouTube or something. I don't know. And check your subscription too, because I know sometimes people are dropped or weird stuff happens. So if you um, just, just check it, make sure you're still subscribed and um, yeah, I will talk to you again. Okay. Bye guys.